Hey Arnold, did you actually lose your job as a pizza delivery guy? Now, just imagine if you had two heads. You'd be way more popular. Your life would be much more interesting. You'd be smarter. And you could finally learn how to ride a bike normally. Look, this is the same guy from the sign. The circus ringmaster. Oh my god. Did that lion actually just swallow the whole two-headed dude? No, actually it seems the heads are unharmed. But what's gonna happen now? Is the big show of the season cancelled? Hey, it seems the manager has noticed you and wants you to be in the cast. But only if you agree to have these two good as new heads sewn onto your body. Isn't that what you've always dreamed of? Well, since you agree, I think you should find out more about the upcoming surgery. The first successful head transplantation was done by Charles Guthrie in 1908. He did it on dogs, though. One of the heads was sewn to the neck of a dog's body upside down. In the 1950s, Demikhov achieved full functioning of a second head. He transplanted 20 heads together with the front half of the dogs. Then the head of one dog was transplanted onto the body of another. And then there was a monkey, which after transplantation even tried to bite one of the doctors. In 2013, Sergio Canavero announced plans for a human head transplant. The estimated cost was $12.8 million. In 2017, under his leadership, a dead human head was transplanted onto a corpse. Actually, it suits you, Arnold. Now it's time to rehearse your part. I hope you don't screw up and disgrace these beautiful heads. You're gonna have to juggle as you ride your unicycle on a springboard through burning hoops. Yay! They don't seem to like you being so stupid, Arnie. Try not to interfere with the professionals managing your body. All that's required of you is to not spoil the performance. The grand premiere. All eyes are fixed on you, Arnold. Today, you are the main part of the show. Fingers crossed, buddy. You're doing great. Just a little more and... Is that Tagaya over there? Did she come to see you? No, no, don't get distracted. Not now, Arnold. What a doofwad. By trying to be a gentleman, you disgraced yourself and the Truel brothers. That was the greatest failure this circus has ever seen. Psst. Arnold! Arnold! Wake up! You pissed them off so much that they want to get rid of you. You know you can't run away from them, right? Although, you're so clumsy, you seem to have succeeded. Almost succeeded. Eight hours later. It's noon already, and he's sleeping like a baby. Arnold, you could sleep through your whole life. Get up already. People sleep for one-third of their lives. During sleep, the body is restoring. Some species of birds, marine mammals, and reptiles can stay awake for up to 10 days. One half of their brain is asleep while the other one is working. In order not to waste time, streamer Asian Andy slept online and earned $16,000 in one night from donations. I think someone's breaking into your house, Arnold. Arnold, who are these guys? They don't seem anything like your friends. Congratulations, Arnie. Somehow you've gotten yourself into what looks like pretty big trouble. Again. What the jumping Jiminy is this place? Looks like a college dormitory at not the best university. Wow, Arnold. Looks like you could be a superstar in a new reality series. How on earth did they get a file on all you guys? Whoopsie daisy, I guess they got you here by mistake. What do they want from all of you? Uh-oh, I don't like this at all. Arnold, haven't you been able to sleep? A day without sleep leads to headaches. Your hearing becomes noisy and difficult. And your memory becomes impaired. Let's believe that on average, a person can endure no more than five days without sleep. That's when the real test begins. 
Optical and auditory hallucinations begin to appear. The first to set a no-sleep world record was 17-year-old Randy Gardner, who stayed up for 11 days. But this was later beaten by Robert McDonald, who stayed awake for 19 days. But the representatives of the Guinness Book didn't <laughs> confirm it. And conducting such kind of experiments on yourself is quite dangerous for your health. You're the only one left, Arnie, old pal. I'm reminded of one legend about Soviet scientists. They put five people in a room for 15 days with a stimulant gas that kept them all awake. Arnold, you're free! I can imagine you probably want to go home and have a good night's sleep. But it seems that you need 30 more days without sleep to get to the nearest town. Well, good luck, Arnold. Hello, Arnold. Hey, I see the late night beer bash is a big success. But don't forget, in the morning, you got a conference of below 60 IQ YouTubers. And if you're late, your career is toast. There's no time for the toilet. You gotta hold it, buddy. The bladder comfortably holds 150 to 200 milliliters of fluid. But after 400 to 500 milliliters, you'll feel some pressure. You must have drunk a lot. E looks like the boss is in a bad mood. And for sure, he ain't gonna let anyone take bathroom breaks. Fluid is absorbed into the kidneys, then descends through the ureter into the bladder. You're probably feeling a bit stressed, Arno, because now you got to hold the pee in with your muscles. I recommend you don't laugh, Arnold, or sneeze, or cough. Anything like that weakens the muscles, and you might start leaking. Hooray! Break time! You're saved! The average person goes tinkle six to eight times a day. Ooh, no luck there, Arnold. In ancient times, rules of decency allowed people to go wee-wee in public, and the division of toilets into men's and ladies only occurred in 1792. Okay, break's over, buddy. Now it's your turn to give your presentation. If you hold it in for a long time, the bladder walls can stretch, so you can hold even more PP. But this can be dangerous. Bacteria and acids in your urine can crawl back up into your kidneys, causing cystitis and pyelonephritis. It seems, Arnold, that everyone approves of your dissatisfaction with company policy. Come on, Arnold. I know you can hold it a little longer. Just 50 more talks and then you're free. Well, that's it. Time to go home. And Arnold, I advise you not to make any sudden movements. If your bladder is that full, it could pop. Yay, you're almost home. Now we just have to get through the morning rush hour. Move slowly. Oh no, it seems your neighbor's coming, Arnold. You know, the guy who likes to give everyone a big hug when they meet. Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> Look, the largest man in the world ever was Robert Pershing Wadlow. His height was two meters, 72 centimeters, and he lived for just 22 years. He suffered from a disease called gigantism. With this disease, the brain releases excessive amounts of growth hormone. Therefore, in the process of human evolution, the norms for height and weight were established, and any large deviations are considered disease. One of the biggest stresses is to the heart, which has to circulate 15 liters of blood instead of just the normal five. And the heart often can't withstand such strenuous dynamics for too long. Looking at you, you'd think you're dead, but you're still alive inside. In a coma, you're unable to respond to external stimuli. Because of this, you'll be the best K-pop fan and you'll be able to listen to the same song on repeat for years. According to patients, during a coma, they feel like some kind of matter. Mm. 
They wandered along long and damp corridors, mazes, went through complex oh. mechanisms. Arnold, they're gonna turn off the machine! Wake up, uh -huh. and I promise no more experiments on you. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Come on, Arnie, you can do it. I never thought I'd say this, but you really had me worried. How are you feeling? Are you speaking Klingon? 